Greetings everybody, this is Juice. In this Air Warfare Group tutorial on the P-51 or the TF-51D Mustang, I'm going to talk about aircraft handling on the ground and give you some tips and techniques that I use to make it look like I know what I'm doing. So sit back and relax. This is episode one of a six-part series on the Mustang, which will lead us into Warbirds over the period of the next few months. I hope you enjoy. Okay, before we get started, let's go ahead and take care of some administrative stuff with your setup on the P-51 or the TF-51D Mustang uh, settings for control. Now, if you have no pedals uh, or, uh, or have a twist stick that's not as reliable or just doesn't feel right to you to use as a rudder, uh, to give you a little assist, there's nothing wrong with going ahead and turning on the uh, the takeoff assistance and the auto rudder. Uh, what I recommend you do is consider doing this to start if you're new to the P-51 Mustang. Uh, go to your special tab, click on the TF-51D or the P-51, either one. Click on the auto rudder, that'll give you the auto rudder if you need it, and also takeoff assistance. You might want to turn that all the way up. I have mine to zero right now and I have the auto rudder disabled because I use the MFG crosswind pedals as I've had for the last five years. Um, make sure you check that if you need assistance and also slide that all the way over to 100% and everything. So let's, with that done, let's get started into the tips of the video. I almost said tutorial. To, I don't think I'm qualified to do a tutorial, but I'm hoping this helps you guys handle the Mustang a lot better on the ground. Okay guys, so here we are in the cockpit. At, we're on Manston uh, Airfield on the channel map, and this airfield is available both on the channel and the Normandy map. But these principles can be applied to any map, any runway, any taxiway uh, that you can find in DCS World. And we're going to go through a couple of various things here with the ground handling. And this will be just episode one, all about ground handling. And I'll show you some of the tips and techniques that I use uh, as I graduated into my skills in DCS World Tailwheel uh, aircraft. And I've got the sounds turned down, so if it doesn't sound loud enough on the engine noise for you guys, it's so you can hear me talking and everything. But before we get started, let's go over and talk to uh, World War II Wayfinder, and I'll link his channel at the end of this video. Uh, and also encourage you guys to go over there and check out his stuff and consider subscribing. He's close to 100,000 subscribers. Uh, he has a lot of World War II content, not just air aviation, but also ground and sea. Uh, so give it, a, give it a look and see what you think. So let's go see what he has to say about the Mustang tailwheel. So moving back then, you've got the rear tailwheel. Now, on the Spitfire, the Spitfire's tailwheel was free castering. So what do I mean by that? Well, essentially, you had no control over it. If it was pointing um, sort of straight up and down on the aircraft, the Spitfire would go forward. If it was turned at an angle, then the aircraft would be pivoting in to whichever degree the tailwheel was sat at. The tailwheel on the Mustang though, the pilot could pull the stick back ever so slightly in the cockpit and that would lock the tailwheel and then you would have six degrees freedom of movement either side. So that was great for, again, for ground handling operations because it meant that the pilot had real control um, when taxiing, whereas the Spitfire had to be really, really careful um, on the, um, cause it used a, a, a brake lever on the stick and then you had to use the rudder pedals at the same time whereas the mustang uses what a lot of pilots i think would find more conventionally um, toe brakes independent so operating the disc brakes on the wheels if you wanted to go left you would just tap down on the left toe uh, left rudder pedal that would break the left wheel and you would go round to the left of course if you needed it to be free castering because you needed to make a really tight turn you just push the stick forward unlock the wheel and then it'll turn on a sixpence Hey, thank you, Wayfinder, and I hope to run into you at Normandy next year for the 80th anniversary of D-Day. So I will link those videos that he put out on the Mustang in the description, and you'll see a couple of those pop up at the end of this video. So here we are. We're set in parking, and I've got everything set. I've got the brake set. Now, we're skipping all of the startup stuff. If you guys want to learn how to start up the Mustang and everything, just Google it on YouTube. You'll find tons of uh, tutorials out there. One thing I will do before we taxi on, though, is I will go ahead and I will take my rudder trim, put it over to six degrees to the right, get ready for the takeoff. And I'm going to push about two seconds of forward nose down trim. 
uh, especially if you've got a heavy tail. If you're in the P51, you've got a heavy tail. And then for this takeoff, I'm going to do uh, zero flaps, but you may need a little bit of flaps, 10 or 20 degrees, if you have a little bit of a load. Uh, the other thing that I'll do over here, if you look on the right over by the, uh, by the rudder trim just above it, you'll see I've got my cooler door open. I can do this or I can go to automatic. But I'm going to, because we're sitting on the ground and we're going to be taxiing around a lot, I'm going to keep an eye on my temperatures, which are good right now. So I'm going to leave them in the auto mode. And as I need to, I will open those doors and make sure that we're not going to uh, overheat the engine. So we're going to go ahead and clear the parking brake. Stick's going to be back a little bit. We're going to clear the parking brake. And then we're going to move forward. I'm going to lean out this way. We've got the stick back. And I'm going to go ahead and turn and use some of that six degrees to the left that, I got, that I've got you know, built into the lockable tail wheel. And if you look at it from the outside, it doesn't look like much. Everything, you can barely see the wheel turning. But as we come down here, you can almost, if you go to the outside left of this, this little alleyway here, or this little uh, parking area, I can almost get what I need to get around this corner. But I'm going to go ahead and do this. Now watch this. If I want to do a turn, like he said, you can tap on the brake. I'm tapped a little bit of right brake, but I also push the stick forward to unlock the tail wheel. So if you look at it outside right now, you can see that the wheel is unlocked and it's at a canter. So one, what's going to happen now is if I go ahead and just gun the engine right now or give a little thrust to make it up this hill, I'm going to go ahead and the tail is going to be locked in with the wheel and it's going to try to spin to the right more. So I'm going to counter that as I push it. I'm going to counter it with a little left brake and then I'll pull the stick back again and let the tail wheel lock in the center. Now when you're, walk, when you're walking... Uh, as a matter of fact, that's what they say the taxi pace is, is about a swift walk, if you're doing it right. And so if you're, wa if you're walking your aircraft down the taxiway like this, and you're looking out that side, and then you're going to swivel. And you know, if, you're go if you know pretty much you're on a controlled airfield, if you know there's nobody else around or anything like that, you can just check it every now and then. Uh, in the real world, with uh, an airplane in front of you, you would want to make sure that you just kept doing this. Basically, I'm leaning in and out, in and out, looking out the side. Now you guys with VR, that's one advantage of VR that I wish I had is I could put my head outside the cockpit. Uh, and Cabby was telling me that he can actually stick his head out through the canopy one time. So so I'm looking around and I'm going over a little hump here. And we never do anything fast. We never do any speeds fast. We never do any inputs fast. We're, if we give it a little bit of gas, we give it a little bit. If we give it a little bit of stick control, we give it a little bit. So what we're doing is we're here at Mansfield today because this is the perfect airfield for me to demonstrate how to taxi around. And we're going to use this white dash line here as our as our reference point. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull out. I've got I've got the stick back and I'm still using that 6 degrees. And we're going to basically follow that taxi line like it's the center taxi li ta or that line like it's the center taxiway line. And we're just going to use that as our reference point. And we're looking in off in the distance. You see in the far distance there. I want to taxi all the way down here. So I'm going over here and I'm leaning and I'm taxiing. Remember, when you give it a little bit of gas, as soon as you start moving, retard the throttle. Bring it back a little bit. If you kept it up, you're just going to keep building speed. Let's see how fast we're going outside. See, that's a pretty good clip right there. We are on an open runway right now, so we do have the ability to go as fast as we want. But again, if you go too fast and you go to do something you know that you don't want to do, you may jam on the brakes and it'll raise the tail off the ground and you can possibly strike the prop and then you'd have to uh, get your engine fixed and everything. Nothing wrong with that, but it's definitely, you know, poor form in the uh, in the cool points for your friends. So as we're going along, now let's say I want to turn around and go the other way. I'm going to go ahead and stop the aircraft and I'm tapping each brake independently just a little bit and then I'm as I start to slow down, I'm releasing that pressure so that I don't lock up the wheel. And again, in the real world, and it maybe it might it might be modeled in DCS world, but the brakes can get hot if you use them too much. So you know, I don't think there's any problems with that in DCS world. So our temps are still good. Uh, our oil pressure is good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and turn. So I'm going to first pull the stick back, get the aircraft rolling just a little bit, give a little throttle, looking outside. Now it's rolling. I'm going to push the stick forward, and I'm going to hit the right brake. I just hit the right. And look at that. I can turn around on a dime. And if you lock that wheel, you can turn around and do this. You can lock it with the stick forward. And look how that wheel's not moving. It's stuck on that stripe right there. 
And then let's do, we'll stop. We'll get it going forward a little bit. Counter with the left. Now that the wheel's locked in center, push down on the stick forward and tap the left brake. And now hold the left brake and you can go around and practice this. I'm just giving a little bit of gas. Let's see how long it goes. Anybody getting sick yet? Okay, let's stop this. And again, what I did to stop that counter that turn was I hit the other brake. Now I've got both brakes down. You can see down here, see they're pushed. If I lean out like that, you can see them rotating down there. And I'll put on my controls indicator for you guys. How's that? There. So now you can see my brakes right there on both sides of the controls indicator. So now I'll go ahead and pull the stick back a little bit, lock it again, tap the right brake. See it's starting to go to the left. That means the wheel's still deflected to the left. And then I'll push it up. And once I'm free and clear, then I'm just letting the, uh, the idle taxiway power push me over here. So let's go ahead and practice this. So let's say, let's go down this taxiway right here. Now, is six degrees enough to make it? Yep, I can do it. And it actually puts me up in a good point over on the right side of the taxiway so I can start my weave like this. I'll lean out to the right and I can see that it's clear. And then I'll lean out to the left as I deflect to the right. And I'll lean out this way. And remember, you lean out the opposite way of the turn so you can see past your nose. And that pretty much concludes episode one. If you guys have any questions, as always, leave them in the comments. And uh, I'll try to answer each one of you individually as much as I can. I definitely try to respond to everybody uh, with a like or a love. Uh, and hey, that looks like a good parking spot there, but we're going to go ahead and go past it. And, uh, and I really hope you guys really enjoy the Warbirds. This is an introductory series on the Mustang because I'm using the TF-51D for this episode and a couple more. Then I'll switch over to the P-51. But this is the most common Warbird that everybody owns because it's free with the game. And I hope you guys are at least enjoying DCS World War II. So here we go. We're going to go in here and we'll turn around and park. Let's pretend that we're coming in. And not going too fast. Whoa. And we're good. Look at all that grease on the ground there. Have to get the kitty litter out. All right, I'm going to go ahead and park it here. I'll tow the aircraft into parking space. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Let me know what you think uh, by giving it a like or a thumbs up. And I will see you in the next episode. This is Juice. Everybody take care.